Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for today's project. I'm going to start with this galvanized um, metal vase from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint it with this folk art white chalk paint. Give it a nice coat. I'm going to let that dry and later on I will give it a couple more coats. So I ended up painting this, um, I'm going to say three times and then there were a couple of little touch-ups, little minor touch-ups. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. If you were brought here by another one of my videos, please leave me a comment below to let me know which video you saw first. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back and thank you so much for your support. I'm always happy to see your smiling faces here. So once this first coat is done, I am going to set it aside to dry. Um, and now I am going to paint one of these LED lanterns from the Dollar Tree as well. And I do need to uh, take some pieces off of it. First the tag, of course. And then also the handle from the top, it pulls right out. And now I'm going to be super careful in pulling it apart. I am going to paint this and I don't want to get any paint on the uh, plastic part, like the window part of it. So I want to pop that out. And of course, if you are making a black and white, um, lighthouse you won't need to paint it you could just leave it the way it is but i am going to um, paint this to match the theme for my little lighthouse and i'm going to take some masking tape and just put it over the uh, led flame part so that paint won't get on that either So I am not going to leave this painted white, but this um, white paint is going to be used as a priming coat. I'm going to eventually paint this blue, but I don't want the black of the lantern to affect the color. So I'm going to use the white, same white chalk paint that I painted the vase with. I'm going to use as a priming coat for this lantern. And I'm sorry if you hear any noise, they are retrofitting my building for uh, earthquake protection. So there's been a lot of loud noises around here lately. So here I am giving the um, galvanized vase another coat of paint. This is one of the large magnetic tins from the Dollar Tree and I am going to take it apart first. Just remove the top. <laughs> take it apart. You just take the top off. <laughs> and then I'm going to use some of this Waverly paint in Ocean. This is an acrylic paint and give that a coat of paint. This one I had to actually paint uh, about three times because the metal wasn't really receptive to the paint. I probably should have given it a light sand first, but I've never painted one of these before, but in the future I know to either use my sanding block or some light grit sandpaper to see if that will help it grip it better. It did take the paint eventually, but it took a few coats. These are some bamboo coffee stirrers and I'm going to go ahead and use that same white chalk paint and paint these white on both sides and then set that aside to dry and while those dry I am going to go ahead and start painting my lantern in that same ocean blue by Waverly. 
and you might want to get a smaller detail brush this lantern has a lot of little tiny crevices that this foam brush had a problem getting into so here's our vase after three coats And I decided I was doing some research looking at lighthouses online and I decided to do a um, color blocking technique that I saw on some of the lighthouses. So I'm going to go ahead and tape off a portion of the vase. I still can't find my painter's tape. I don't know where I put it. Um, I don't know if I should show you guys my room where I keep all of my crafting stuff. It's a bit of a disaster. I just know it's in there somewhere, but I can't find it. So I'm still using this masking tape. I had a subscriber comment that the masking tape was too porous. Um, that That's why it was allowing bleeding with painting. And she suggested going around two or three times. So that's what I'm going to try to do um, for this painting method. We'll see how that goes. I think I'm just going to go back to the Dollar Tree and get some more painter's tape because I don't know where it is. Okay, so this is how it is looking for, um, for me to paint it with a color blocking. So I'm going to take this same ocean blue Waverly paint and I'm going to paint the middle section of the lighthouse blue. And I'm trying not to have too much paint on the brush when I go around the edges where the paint is, where the tape is, I'm sorry, because I don't want there to be any bleeding. So I kind of went around with a sparse coat. I just wanted to make sure that the white was covered and I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now while that dries, I need to take the tape off the flame of the lantern and then put the plastic windows back onto the lantern. Okay, so that didn't work out <laughs> exactly as planned. I mean, it's not a total disaster, but there's uh, obvious bleeding. It's not a super crisp edge, um, but I will fix that later on in the video in those spots in particular. But I still think it looks pretty good. So now our tin is painted. I'm going to take the bottom part and just pop it over the bottom of the vase, which will now be part of the top of the lighthouse. And it is a perfect fit. Now you could glue this down, but there really is no need to because it is such a snug fit. You can put the top on, you press it down, and you can shake it and it won't come loose. So I'm not gonna glue it down. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And now I'm going to take the coffee stirs that I painted and I took a measurement and cut the first piece and now I'm going to use that piece as a template to cut five more pieces. So I will have six of these smaller pieces in total. And so now using hot glue, I'm going to put just a dot at the bottom of one of the little posts and I'm going to glue these around the top of the lighthouse. And there is a line going around the that allows me to line them up perfectly 
So they're not going to be crooked. One's not going to be taller than the other one, that line right there. And like I said, I will be using six of these posts. This is my first time making a lighthouse. Um, so all of this is kind of, I'm kind of making up as I go. But a lighthouse, of course, does fit with a nautical theme, and that's what I'm doing with my projects these days. So the top of the tin is going to fit within these posts perfectly. I don't have to glue it, but I am going to put a dot of glue on a few of these posts, and then I'm going to slide the top back on and that's just going to give it a more secure hold. You don't have to glue it if you don't want to, because if you do glue it and you try to take it apart, the glue will remove some of the paint. So if you don't want that to happen, you don't have to glue it. You can just put it in there and the post will hold it really snugly. So now I'm just going to take a little bit more of the white chalk paint and try to clean up some of those edges that were just obviously wrong <laughs> I mean the the overall look of it is okay the edges I mean of the paint um, but there are areas where it just looked like the paint was dripping down and that's what I want to try to clean up So I found these doors and windows at the Dollar Tree and they're meant for their version of Legos. And so I found this blue door, which I really like. They also have this red door, which to me kind of reads more farmhouse, like a barn or a farm. But I do like the idea of the red door on the blue and white lighthouse. Look at that contrast. I think it's, it's such a striking contrast. I really like that pop of red but I'm not too crazy about the style of the door for the lighthouse and when I put the blue door on it just seemed to be a fit like it just seemed to go um, I don't know if it's the arched windows or the panels at the bottom of the door but I did decide to go with the blue door obviously if you are doing a color that's different you can always paint these little um, Lego piece doors and windows to match whatever theme you have for your project. I just happen to be doing blue and white and they happen to have blue windows and doors. So I am going to go ahead and attach those with hot glue. This is a scrap piece of the fishing net decor left over. Um, this is the fishing net decor from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use this um, and I'm going to loop it from one of the white posts to the next using a little bit of hot glue. The glue sticks that I'm using are the clear ones that you get from Walmart because I didn't want the glue to dry and then become opaque and take away from the overall appearance. So I really like this clear glue. They sell it right next to the regular hot glue at Walmart. And I really liked it for this project because there are so many areas where I'm going to use hot glue that you're going to be able to see. And I don't want that cloudy, opaque look kind of taking away. And like right here, for example, where I'm going to glue down the swags because they're kind of wild and crazy. It's glued down, but you don't see that opaqueness. Opaqueness, is that a real word? <laughs> From the regular hot glue, it's just the clear glue. And this is our finished product, guys. Our cute little lighthouse. How do you guys think this project turned out? I think it is super adorable. I really, really like it. 
Um, it's given me a few ideas for, for some other projects in making this one, but I do like the texture on the vase. Um, I think it adds such character to the building that's a lighthouse and it's just giving me real ocean vibes and I just really like it. What do you guys think? Now around it, I put some of the white rocks from Dollar Tree along with some sea glass, some of the seashells, the black stones from Dollar Tree as well. And I also use some reindeer moss around the building as well, just so it wouldn't be sitting there off on its own. <laughs> it needs a little vignette, a little setting for the lighthouse. So I'm so super happy with the way this turned out. Drop me a comment below and let me know what you think about it. What colors you would have chosen for your lighthouse or for this lighthouse. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our three 1K giveaway winners. The winners are Kathleen Robertson, Darlene Mullins, and Danya Gonzalez Copeland. Congratulations, ladies. You are the three new winners of the 1K giveaway. I know we're almost at 4,000. At 5,000, I'll be hosting another giveaway. So if your name was listed there, please email me at the email address in the description box below to claim your gift card prize within seven days. Seven days from the date of this video being posted is the deadline. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm always happy to have you here. Um, have a beautiful blessed day and I will see you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.